Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage, or welcome for the first time if you're just joining my channel. Uh, I am making a video today to show the FOF 1222E, and it is ready. Uh, it is ready to uh, be given back to the client. I've gone through it, and just kind of a quick summary, um, the, the owner told me it needed to be maintenanced, and they were experiencing... Uh, what amounts to occasionally the machine would slow down in the middle of stitching and then speed up again. And so I went through the machine as I do with all of them. So the entire machine was cleaned, uh, adjusted. It was lubricated everywhere above, below. Um, and uh, as I went through the machine, there were certain things I wanted to check on this specific model. Uh, there are different things that can cause an interruption in stitching uh, even if it's a temporary interruption, and sometimes they're not good things. And so I wanted to check those out before I went through the whole machining and got it ready for the owner because they wanted to know. So uh, underneath, as I mentioned in the prior video, there's something called a feed gear. It can be broken. There are There's a lot of wonderful steel in this machine, but there are plastics used. This is a hybrid. If you've seen, if, you, if you're not sure what I mean by hybrid, see my videos on hybrid machines and why, why they're worth saving and maintaining, but they're not the same as all metal. Uh, anyway, that feed gear that I showed in the prior video underneath, uh, when I had the, the base off of the machine, um, it checked out fine, so it wasn't that. Of course, I also wanted to check the two sets of nylon gears, this one up here particularly on the left, to make sure, and I turned manually with the hand wheel to make sure that the, uh, as I went around looking, I didn't see any cracks in the gears. That was a good thing because that was, that was a concern I had that you often see this in Bernina's or any machine that uses a, a nylon gear up top. So that was good. I checked the belt and the belt uh, is in good shape. It does not need replacing, but the belt may have stretched a little bit over time. This, this machine has been used for, for, for quite some time. And so I adjusted it and I, uh, I simply uh, gave it a slight adjustment. It did not need to be drum tight. Most belts do not, and you don't over tighten those on uh, FOFs. So I basically uh, gave it just a tad bit of a, a, a snugging, gave it a little bit more attention. And, um, and then lastly, uh, I mentioned, of course, uh, behind, hiding behind, the owner couldn't see this because they're very familiar with sewing machines, but it was hiding on the shaft behind the shuttle. And I kept pulling and pulling. It took me over an hour just to get this stuff off. And this is what came out. And so this, uh, it could have been any one of these things. Uh, not any one. It could have either been the thread or the belt. Uh, or it could have just been the machine, you know, was you know, due for oiling. This machine does not have oil points up top. So again, this is one of those machines where, um, you, you know, it, it takes more effort to... Um, to, to do maintenance, right? And of course we know when we get into the late 70s and then in the 80s, what happens? Ma uh, manufacturers, slowly but surely, they take away a lot of the access screws uh, that would make it easy for the owner to do the maintenance, to do the, the oiling or the cleaning, right? And, we, and you see that in almost all consumer products. But anyway, uh, these are really strong machines. They're beautifully designed, um, or, or when I say designed, I mean by that engineered, uh, they have a really, uh, really powerful uh, stitch. They make beautiful stitches, as you're going to see. Uh, so here's the plug, for those of you who are new to the machine. It has a square um, sort of shape. And at the, you'll notice on one side only, there's a notch. And that notch is, is what tells you how to install this. Many plugs don't just go in any which way. They have a specific way they like. And you need to do it that way. You don't want to damage the plug or the machine. So we're going to keep the notch is going to be upright. And so I'll turn the camera a little bit. Uh, and when I come over here to the place where I'm going to plug it in, the notch is upright and she plugs right in. And she's plugged in. I think I have power here. Yeah, we are set up for power. But before I turn the machine on, this machine, by the way, like many from the period, when you plug it in, it's not ready to sew. There's a power button. Uh, you don't have that when you go way back into the early electric machines. But anyway, let's see. So I thought I would show you guys how to thread this machine. People often ask me, hey, can you show me how to thread uh, a machine? And again, if I don't have one, I can't really show you. Uh, there are manuals and there are videos that others may have posted. But I'll go ahead because this is a good example. I told you guys not all machines are the same. And European machines 
are uh, particularly different sometimes. Uh, so I've got a, a good. This is a Mettler, one of my one of my one of your better brands of thread. Now, you might think you just let's say you've got this machine. You don't have the man. You might think, oh, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to come down because most machines they start at the top threading and they come down and they do kind of a J shape, but not this one. This is a later machine. Uh, many of your and some of your later Kenmore's did this as well. You actually this this point here is for when you're uh, bobbin winding, but you're going to come down here and you'll notice there's a there's like a um, sort of gap here and that gap is there on purpose. It comes the thread comes straight through. Kind of a light blue thread here. I don't know how well it's going to show up. Hopefully you guys can see that with this light. Anyway, so I've got this right now. I'm going to come down and yeah, I'm going to come under and notice the check spring is here. Let's get over here and I'll, I'll zoom in for you to see this because, you know, a lot of uh, machines from the vintage era, um, you know, they have a similar thread pattern. But when you come under, right, we'll zoom in even more so that you guys can see, hopefully. Oops, that's a good view of my phone. Okay. Uh, so you come down, right, you come around and you're going to come under this little, this little, guide here and when you do notice it picks up on the check spring it should and you want to see that check spring move when you gently tug on the thread that means you've got it set up right you're not going to hit this thread guide yet you're going to come up and you're going to come on the take up arm which again should always be up let's zoom back out here right you want this take up arm in the up position when you're threading and of course you want your presser foot up never have the presser foot down when you're threading a machine you'll you'll mess up your thread tension then I'm going to come here and now I've got this guide and then I've got one more down below oops come here you and this guide you could you if you're new to the machine you might even miss it because it's very um, it is very um, there we go uh, it's it's hidden right right under the uh, the needle clamp. So uh, again, you can get manuals if you don't have a manual for this model. You can get them. I have I found one uh, free. It's a PDF and it didn't actually cost. Sometimes you have to pay a little bit, but this one was uh, you know it was, it was just free for the downloading. It was manuals. Uh, I'll have to find the website anyway. So now we're ready to get our needle threaded here. I'm going to get my scissors and give myself a fresh cut thread end. Uh, this is the needle that the owner had in the machine. I'm not, I don't remember what size. I forgot to ask. It may be a 14. I'm just guessing at that. And let's see here. And it threaded. It's front to back, which most machines by this time period, uh, most all domestic machines thread this way, right? Now, I'm going to kind of hold the thread in my hand here. Let's see, angle down a bit for you guys. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get my bobbin thread pulled up. There it is. There's my little tool here. By the way, this is a little pick tool. I don't even know what it is or what it does, but I use this. I kept using smaller and smaller tools and was finally able to get all that big thread nest out of there. Just it took patience and just just you know wiggling the hand wheel like I was mentioning in the last video. And you just you just take your time. You don't get in a hurry. Uh, and again, this can happen. That's one of the things that's really important in troubleshooting. Make sure I got my threads in the right spot here. Um, but thread jams are one of those things, you know, a piece of thread can get around a machine and it can hide on you and you don't even know that the, that the, um, you don't even know that the, apparently I can't multitask here. You don't even know that, uh, what's causing the, the, you know, the machine malfunctioning because you don't know that you have a thread jam, right? I had to come around the side of the foot there to get the, the thread underneath. Now, um, and if you don't know this, you're like, oh man, what's going on with this? So 
Again, threads are sneaky because they have a habit of hiding. Again, I think this machine, you know, basically its issues were, were had multiple causes, and uh, but hopefully we've addressed them. And I think what I'll go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and put the sewing deck on. We don't have to have it to do a sample, but it's a little easier. Uh, you know, your free arm is primarily useful to you when you're when you're sewing cuffs and things like that. Um, oh, and I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here. This just makes it, this just sort of, uh, the little ends here will go in to the machine. And again, this is not part of your normal oiling. This is just something I like to do so that I can, we can get the machine to, the deck will slide in and now it comes out a lot more easily, right? Some of them have little release buttons, but this one here, we just simply slide in like you saw. And this looks like a pencil mark. I don't know, I'm gonna leave that in case the owner needs it. Okay, so where is our fabric sample? Again, you're seeing this brown, medium weight, pretty fairly dense cotton. Um, and I'm gonna use that as my, my sample maker. Okay, and we're gonna start, start with a straight stitch. And hold on to my thread tails, get my stitch started. That's actually zigzag, but I'm gonna start with straight. Let's see here. So we are, we'll, we're gonna keep center needle position, and we're gonna come over to straight stitching. And let's go to four, that'll give us a long stitch. I can do a shorter stitch, guys, but I want you to be able to see it. Short stitches are hard to see on camera sometimes. So, get our power on. She sounds a little quieter to my ear since the work's been done, but then again, it's not my machine, so the owner knows best about the sound. And I always like to make my first row of stitches a little, kind of a slow speed, kind of let the machine wake up after it's had its maintenance. So far, everything's looking very nice, so I'll come down again and we'll go a little faster. Okay, and then we can, of course, we'll go back tack. It's a very nice, convenient back tack on these fofs, or fafs, I think it's fof. Okay, now let's take this up. We're gonna turn around and I'll set up the zigzag. You have a lot of zigzag options. And, you know, sometimes uh, manufacturers of sewing machines, they do things for convenience sake, and you'll see this, but you know, again, it can make, make a machine more complex, right? You noted that the further back in history you go, you go back to the early 1900s, for example, which is not the beginning of sewing machines, but let's say you go there, you have a lot more things you have to do manually, but then the mechanism is less complex for anything to, to break on you, in theory. Uh, okay, so we're gonna come over here, and I'm going to set, what do I want here? Let's go to, Zigzag. Mm. We'll go to a really wide zigzag right here. We'll go kind of in the middle. We could go shorter or longer, but we'll try that. And I've got two layers of this cotton, and then it doubles up to four when we get over to the um, um, to the seams because you got a folded seam. But now I'm going to come over and see if we can space out the zigzag more. Yeah, and it, the fabric will feed faster, obviously. And I just did back tacking uh, with the zigzag. Okay. bit more more space between my rows here okay so 
Now what we're going to do, I want to try out one of these. Um, try out one of the decorative stitches. Now the decorative stitches are, you have with the faff, I'm going to pull this up for you guys to see it. You have, um, you have utility stitches. Um, some of these you may or may not use. There's blind stitch, you know, there's, and then over here you have decorative stitches. Most of the machines, um, most people never use them, but they were offered, they helped sell machines, and some people found them useful. Um, for example, with the Singer 403, which is about you know, 15 years, came out 15 years before this machine, 15, 20 years, um, you have to use cams. You have to take the cam out, put it back in. I don't think it's a big deal. You know, as often as you might do these stitches, who cares? But again, this push button feature that the FOF had was all about convenience, okay? So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna push diamond, and it says zero uh, to one. So what that means is we need to set our stitch length to one. <clears throat> so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna come all the way over to one. We still have, we still have center needle position. Actually, yeah, we're going to go between zero and one. I think that's right. Yes. Um, and then we're going to have, we're going to be setting this little wheel here sets the, the length of the stitch. So we'll go to 11. And let's see what the machine does. Now, as I mentioned to you guys, when I was doing the uh, video on the Singer 403 with the cams, when you alter the width and the length of, of your stitch settings on your machine, it creates variations on stitch patterns. Okay, and I've got this now, if I, if I were to try to make the stitch longer, you would lose the effect, right? You wouldn't get the same effect on the, um, and of course, what's, what's creating this is this cam, this set of cams up here. Um, but those cams can impact even zigzag and straight stitching. So that's why I really wanted to inspect them before giving this machine, you know, it's complete overhaul. Just didn't want to, um, didn't want to go through all that because if, the, again, if the nylon cams are cracked, that, that changes the whole equation. Do we really want to overhaul the machine? Because now you're looking at a much more substantial cost. Okay, so, uh, oh, if you want to undo because remember, we've got this button pushed down. This button here, you just click it to the right, and it releases. I'll show you again. I'll try to show you again. Right, so we've got the decorative stitch. Come over here. Oops, come here. Uh, you can do, you can try another one. And again, just, just barely touching this little black knob to the right. Uh, a lot releases the decorative stitches. Most people never use them. These were, um, they were, you know, they actually weren't in that bad of shape, but they've been uh, maintenance to make sure that they are not sticky. Um, you know, again, they have limited use, but you know, you're, some of you like them. Most people I have found, most of these machines I've overhauled, all, actually any vintage machine I've overhauled of any brand that has built-in decorative stitches or the use of cams, they were almost never used, but they were a selling point. So there you go. All right, uh, let's see, we will, uh, let's see, let's go back, we'll come back, I'll show you guys a short straight stitch, since we've already got our length fairly low anyway, which we had it set for, so let's come down, we'll make one more row, if I can keep my arm and hand out of the way here. Okay, and, and I'll pull the sample up in just a second. You guys can see the whole thing. So again, uh, one of the reasons I like doing sewing stitching samples like this, it's nice to have, you don't have to do this, but it's nice to have fabric where, you know, it's, it's a good, good size fabric. And then you have uh, these seams so that you can always check and make sure that the machine is holding tension 
when the density changes. All vintage models should do that very well for you. Um, a lot of new machines, uh, especially the super cheap new machines, do not. And there are many people you can read on the internet who've been very disappointed in their little plastic computerized wonders. Uh, there are some nicer, very expensive computerized machines. Um, okay, so let's take a look, guys. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here we are. You can see the samples I've done. Here's uh, one of the initial rows. Can't remember which was which here. Okay, so it came down with a long straight stitch. Good consistency here. Made a little U-turn, came back down, came around, made a short, not quite a satin stitch. I didn't shorten it that much, but short, and then we elongated it just to test it. Here's where I did this little spot. Here's where I did the, you know, I did a back tack, a quick reverse. Let's see, and then I came around, and this is one of the decorative stitch patterns. Again, uh, you know, a lot of you either use embroidery machines or you know, most sewing that's, that's done, honest to God, is, is, is either straight stitch or zigzag, right? That's pretty much what most people do. Uh, that's, that's what they use. So anyway, uh, you know, we've got both sides here. We've got good, good uh, thread tension, both up and upper and lower. And I did not experience any hesitating with the stitching while I was going. So there you have it, guys. The FOF 1222E. Two, 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 um, we were able to, uh, you know, I had to kind of go through and diagnose the machine. By that I mean I had to figure out, okay, what is wrong and what is not wrong? What is not broken, right? Because, before, you know, it's not like when you take a car in, you know, before you want to pay someone to overhaul it, you want to know, hey, you know, is this thing, um, is it worth it, right? So because these gears do not appear cracked, I could not find any cracks. The feed gear down below was fine and uh, the belt was in good shape. It just needed adjusting. And once we got the thread nest out, uh, this sh she should be good. She should be ready to go and for uh, uh, more sewing duty. So anyway, thank you all for watching. I thought I would just show this to you while I was while I had it on my bench before it goes back to the owner. And uh, stay tuned. I, I don't get FOFs very often, but I have a couple more machines coming up. I have a two-tone turquoise white brand model. Um, from the early 60s, I have a Singer 201, and I have a Singer 191, I believe, in a sort of a nougat uh, chocolate color coming up. So anyway, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, and uh, we will see you next time.